Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Headquarters United States Army Corps of Engineers. This is a special day for our Army and our Eng Engineer Regiment as we gather for the annual Engineer Regimental Muster. We also just recently celebrated the 249th birthday of the United States Army, as well as the 249th birthday of the Engineer Regiment. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and the invocation provided by Chaplain Bailey. Almighty God, as we gather to celebrate 249 years of engineering support to our nation, from Colonel Giridley's fortification of Boston to the broad spectrum of ongoing military programs, civil works projects, and contingency operations, we give thanks for the proud soldiers and civilians who stand together, bringing expertise, experience, and drive to support our nation and the joint force. We give thanks for the distinguished lineage of combat engineers conducting breaching operations securing vital lines of communication, and fortifying defensive positions in places like Stony Point, Ramagin, Wigwan, Korea, Funan, Vietnam, Baghdad, and Kabul, using maps created and updated by fellow Corps of Engineers experts. Throughout this history, we are reminded that it's people who use their God-given intellect, skills, and sacrificial drive to accomplish this history. We also seek to remember and honor those who paid the ultimate sacrifice and service especially those we lost this year. Staff Sergeant William Jerome Rivers. Sergeant Kennedy Layden Sanders. And Sergeant Briona Alexandria Moffitt. We ask for your comfort for their families and peers who still mourn their loss. And ask that you inspire us to carry on their legacy with the same commitment to selfless service and courage in the face of adversity. We pray for all those currently serving, in uniform, as civilians, and as members of the Army Reserve and National Guard. May you guide, direct, and encourage each member of the Engineering Corps, and further strengthen our resolve to always try. These things we pray in your holy name. Essayons, amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Chaplain Daly. Please be seated. Our hosts for today's ceremony are Lieutenant General Scott Spellman, the 55th Chief of Engineers and Commanding General, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and Command Sergeant Major Doug Gaelic, the 15th Command Sergeant Major, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. We would also like to recognize our distinguished guests joining us today, Mrs. Cherise Spellman, spouse of General Spellman, and Mrs. Veronica Gaelic, spouse of Command Sergeant Major Gaelic. The birth of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers can be traced back to 16 June 1775, when Congress authorized the Chief Engineer as one of several staff officers for the Army it had created just two days earlier. After overseeing the construction of fortifications during the battle at Bunker Hill on 17 June 1775, Colonel Richard Gridley was wounded. A few weeks later, when General George Washington assumed command of the Army at Boston, 
Colonel Gridley became his first chief engineer. Three companies of engineer troops were added to the Continental Army in May 1778, and all engineer officers and troops were formed into a distinct branch in March 1779. The Corps of Engineers disbanded at the end of the Revolution, but in 1794, engineers returned to the Army in a united corps of artillerists and engineers. On 16 March 1802, President Thomas Jefferson signed legislation permanently establishing a separate Corps of Engineers and constituting the Corps at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. Engineers have been a part of many important moments throughout the history of our Army and our nation. Notable achievements executed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers include designing and building early fortifications to resist the British assault, exploring and mapping the western frontier in our nation's navigation channels, the construction of the Panama Canal, and execution of the Manhattan Project. Soldiers and units of the Engineer Regiment have provided mobility, counter-mobility, and survivability support throughout every major conflict in our nation's history. Perhaps General Persifor Smith summed up engineers the best when he reported that for officers of the Corps, nothing seemed too bold to be undertaken or too difficult to be executed. At this time, I would like to take a few minutes to review the history of the muster. The word muster itself means to cause, to gather. The muster roll is a register of the officers and soldiers in a military unit or ship's company. In the broadest terms, the muster is a gathering for service review, inspection, or roll call. The military muster in the United States dates back to 1637, designed as a gathering of the local militia to a central location to be enrolled or answer the roll call and receive training. The muster was also a social occasion. As we mustered together on this very special occasion, as engineers and as soldiers, celebrating our time-honored history and tradition while building the future, we can never forget our previously fallen engineer soldiers that paid the ultimate sacrifice to our grateful nation. At this time, I ask that Command Sergeant Major Gaelic please come forward. All right, good morning, General Spellman, guests, fellow engineers. Thank you for being here with us today. When we muster, we are doing more than taking counts. We are remembering those we counted on who are no longer here. Today, as we take roll call, we are missing three soldiers from the 7th, 18th, engineer company from our formation. So before we begin, I want to take a moment to recognize those brave souls that cannot muster with us today. Staff Sergeant William Rivers, Sergeant Kennedy Saunders, Sergeant Brianna Moffat. They were serving together on a military base in Jordan in support of Operation Inherent Resolve. And tragically, they died together on January 28, 2024, following the drone strike. Staff Sergeant Rivers, who was known as Will to his friends and family, was a resident of Carleton, Georgia. From a young age, he displayed a deep sense of, of, of patriotism and desire to serve his country. In pursuit of his passion, he enlisted in the Army Reserve in 2011 as an interior electrician. Throughout his service, he demonstrated a deep commitment to his fellow soldiers and the mission. Will was just shy of his 47th birthday when he died, but it's how he lived that made all the difference to those he left behind. Will is remembered by his peers for his demonstrated valor, his perseverance, and unwavering commitment to his duty. His family won't forget his gentle demeanor and fierce, determined personality. He is remembered by all as someone who was always ready to face life's challenges and with courage and resilience. Staff Sergeant Saunders, a resident of Wake Cross, Georgia, joined the Army in 2019 as a horizontal construction engineer. She was first assigned to the 381st Engineer Company in Tifton, Georgia, after she completed advanced individual training. In 2021, Kennedy completed an eight-month rotation to Djibouti, Africa. In 2023, she was later assigned to the 718th Engineer Company at Fort Moore. 
Katie was only 24 when she died, but she lived in all those 24 years. She was a dedicated servicewoman, known for facing challenges head on and displaying unwavering strength in the pursuit of her duties. Sergeant Moffitt of Savannah, Georgia, also enlisted as a horizontal construction engineer. She graduated from Windsor Forest High School, where she was in the marching band and was a member of the junior ROTC program. In addition to being known as strong-willed, the 23-year-old Brianna was equally known for making people feel seen and heard. She, a gift she carried with her into the National Guard and to her deployment. It is a gift remembered today by those who touched, who she touched in a short but fulfilled life. These three soldiers died serving their country. They stood in the gap for all of us. Each left behind an indelible mark on the U.S. Army Reserve and our regiment. Their sacrifice has been recorded in our regimental history. They will never be forgotten by us or by the members that serve our regiment. Let's take a moment to remember them and those lives they touched at Seance. Thank you, Sergeant Major. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lieutenant General Spellman, your 55th Chief of Engineers. Thank you and good morning, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to join us on this uh, time-honored tradition of the engineer muster. And Sergeant Major Gaelic, thank you for remembering our three fallen soldiers this, uh, this past year. You've heard some of you heard me say this many times, that the history of our nation really is the history of the Army Corps of Engineers because they are very closely interwoven. Our founding fathers established the Continental Army and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers 249 years ago at Breed's Hill outside of Boston. Combat engineers has, have since served with distinction in every armed conflict in which America was involved. Our sappers fought at Breed's Hill and Bunker Hill. And during our westward expansion, they forged and mapped their way westward into the unknown, surveying routes and canals. They constructed bridges and railroads in World War I, and daringly captured a bridge across the Rhine River during World War II. They were the unsung heroes in Korea, and they cleared tunnels in Vietnam. Our engineers fought in Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom, and these same engineers stayed behind in both countries to help rebuild what was torn apart in those wars. So even as we muster today, engineers are out there in the field providing emergency response and recovery for natural and man-made disasters here at home. And engineers are deployed today in the Middle East, across the Pacific, and in Europe supporting our war fighters. We have a heritage of service and sacrifice in this branch in defending our great country. This is something for which we can all be proud. Since its establishment in 1775, the Army Engineer Regiment soldiers have been there to deliver on our missions. We have been relied upon to lead the way. All of us standing here now today are descended from that proud and mighty engineering lineage. This is what today is all about. So I can't address our regiment without mentioning our upcoming 250th anniversary commemoration, which will kick off on January 1st, 2025, and that commemoration will last throughout the year. Throughout the calendar year, we will highlight the innumerable contributions throughout our nation's history, made by soldiers in the field and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. We want to use this opportunity to tell the stories of our people, their ideas, events, and technologies that help shape the Corps of Engineers. Because we are celebrating our past and focusing focusing on the core of engineers of tomorrow, the slogan for the commemoration, as you can see here on the panel, is building the future. This commemoration gives us an entire year to tell our story of engineering excellence. It's also a way to remind the public of the important role the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has played in building the landscape of our country. And then finally, it's our opportunity to highlight some of the innovations that will guide us into that future. Engineers don't shrink from the challenges put in front of us. Think of our motto, essay ons, which means where others have failed, let us try. No matter the challenge, let us try. 
It's that attitude, it's that passion, it's our culture, it's our willingness to take on hard tasks when others don't that has sustained us for the past 249 years and it will sustain us into the next century as well. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a privilege to serve the Army, the nation, and each of you. And of course, it's an honor to wear the core castles with all of you as well. Essay on, building strong, be all you can be. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and join us in singing the Engineer and Army songs. The words are in your program. joined by the youngest soldier in the audience, Captain Brian Sicarello. issue only, so if you received one during a previous muster, uh, you do not need another card. Please join us for some cake. As an admin note, we request that all soldiers report to room 3 and 67 for a follow-on briefing at 1200 hours. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for coming. Essay on, building strong, be all you can be. Yeah.